Hello and welcome to another ASC Productions video. Today I wanted to talk about storage devices, specifically storage devices for old laptops like this Compact V2000 that I have here. It originally came out in the year 2004-2005. I bought mine originally in the year 2005. And so it still had a spinning IDE hard drive. That's the older format. It's a slower. I believe these were only at 100... 133 megahertz, something like that. Uh, so they're slow, the spinning drives are not necessarily reliable, especially in a mobile system like a laptop that gets moved around and uh, you know put in backpacks and, and things like that. And they're also old. I don't know of anybody still making new IDE hard drives. At least everything I've seen when I've gone shopping have all been either refurbished or just used uh, hard drives. And so after a while, they start to go bad and they're not very reliable. They also suck a ton of power, create a lot of heat. And so in these older systems, um, you know, it, it might be worth upgrading. I've seen a lot of options for upgrading to something like a compact flash. Unfortunately, the compact flash drives are fairly expensive. Uh, once again, they're not a super common format anymore. And so demand for them has gone down and prices have gone on the rise for the few who actually do want one. And so I have here my Compact V2000 and I want to replace the hard drive. And it, I, I picked this laptop of the two older laptops I have because it's super easy. It's just these two screws here on the bottom. And then this just pulls up. There we go. And here's the old drive. See if this has a manufacturer's date on it that's easy to discern. It is just, I want to say this is a 40 or a 60 gig drive. I'm not seeing a quick date on here of when it was built, but it is pretty old. I don't even think this is the original drive to this computer. Well, it might be. It says replaced with HP Spare, so it might be the original drive to this computer. So that means that this drive is at least 14 years old. Um, so probably time to uh, replace that. So I was looking at my options and I thought well if I'm going to spend the money let's go ahead and get an SSD. So I started looking around and I apologize for just videoing my my screen here but just for uh, my ease of use. Um, to get a 16 gig IDE SSD they want 30 bucks and then if I want to get a little bit more, here's one for 64 gigs for 50 bucks. And then we have this one here, which is 128 gigs for $85. And then another one, another 128 gig for 100 and for $97, almost 100 bucks. Um, these prices are at this point triple almost what they are. Uh, if you are buying just normal SATA drive. So, um, in fact, I think it is more than triple. You can pick up a, a 120 gig SATA drive for under $30, like right around that $25, $27 mark. So, I was bumming around on Amazon a few days ago, and I came across this. And this is not an IDE drive. It is an enclosure to fit a... Um, MSATA drive. So, and one of these. And it's one of the ones with the two holes, MSATA. So it's not an M.2 drive. Um, those typically have just one hole here in the back for easy visual identification. The MSATAs have two holes, and that's what this is. So I ordered it, and lean down here, it has arrived. Here's the outer shell. Here is the, let me turn off my screen there, there we go. Here is the adapter. Here is the um, storage, 128 gigs. We'll go ahead and put this together. We'll put the old drive back in and we will clone the old drive to this new drive. Expand the storage on there. And we'll see how it performs compared to the 
uh, spinning media. And I don't think the results there are going to be very surprising uh, in the slightest. Be real careful with these screws. You are just screwing into plastic, so you want them snug, but you don't want to over tighten them because you just rip the plastic out and then you won't be able to screw in anymore. Same goes for when you screw into the uh, sides here. This is, there's no thread there, it's just plastic, so the first time you go to screw it in. So this isn't, you know, super high end, super high quality, uh, but it is filling a need for older systems because. You know, if you uh, want a rec more retro system, uh, or just an older system in general, I don't know if a computer running Windows XP is considered uh, retro yet or not. So we're going to go ahead and put the old hard drive back in. Because one thing I'll definitely be doing if this works is probably buying a similar uh, setup for my other quote unquote retro notebook, which only has a 40 gig hard drive and it, it's quite noisy. Um, and old spinning drives, when they're noisy, always has me a little, a little worried just on the longevity of, of that drive, how long it's going to last for. Let's get booted up here and we'll pause for a minute and be back. I need to download a, a drive cloner software and clone the, uh, clone the drive over. All right, so we have the Macrium Reflect installed. It's showing the old drive. Then I have this old school adapter that I've had since I was probably, oh, 16 years old. Uh, that this plugs right there on into. Other end is USB. Go ahead and pull out my USB drive. Plug in this. And let's see if this shows up. I may have to uh, um, go to control panel, uh, administrative tools. Computer management. Let's see if this drive shows up. Disk management. It does not yet. Is it? It's it's still installing the. There we go. So let's close Macrium real quick. And let's reopen it and see if it detects the drive. There we go. So we're going to clone the disk. Select this clone to it's that one right there. Next. Next. Finish. We don't need a back schedules. And we'll see how long this takes. You can hear the hard drive spin it away. Now it should actually go fairly quick because we're just copying from the spinning drive and not co uh, copying to it. All right, and we'll be back in a few when this gets all done. Alright, so the clone took 27 minutes exactly. It is a 75 gig drive. So now what we're going to do is going to close out of this uh, we're going to unplug everything from it, and I have installed Crystal Disk Mark, and we'll see how that performs. So let's get out of here. Now this is going to take a while. Just hear that hard drive spinning away, <laughs> working its little brains out. Alright, so the test is, is finishing up, but uh, here are our numbers, and these numbers are abominable. These are terrible. Uh, I think just about anything is going to be better. So let's go ahead and uninstall the old drive and install the new one. Let's shut this down. Uh, 
Now that's turned off. We no longer have fan spin. Fan spin is how we know that it's turning on. Even just the cover over the hard drive is quite warm um, from it uh, generating heat from the cloning and then the performance test. Oh, uh, that is quite hot. All right, it has a little proprietary connector that we need to get off of here. It's as as hot to the touch. As like I said, one of the best things about upgrading to SSD, less power and less heat. Now, this has its own little individual compartment to uh, keep it away from the internal components to keep the heat down. No, this this drive in my hand is un uncomfortably warm to hold right now, and that's never a good thing. Heat kills computers faster than just about anything. Orientation on this is important, so we're just keeping the uh, drive oriented correctly. It's important to pull this off as straight as possible because you can bend your pins on the drive. Oh, and I did it a little bit right there. Bent those out just a little bit. Not a problem because I don't plan on you reusing this drive. Uh, but in case I ever do have to, I'll have to be wary of that. Alright. Line up. There's a blank here and a blank pin there, so that makes it easy. Sometimes these have all the pins populated. I've actually had to cut a pin off of an adapter before. Oh, why is this not going on? Alrighty, come on. There we go. There's that, and there's that. Not that it matters too much because this laptop does weigh like six pounds, five and a half pounds, something like that which was light for its time um, but it also is significantly lighter than the old drive uh, just in the scheme of things that's not that big a deal just because um, this laptop's already so heavy but on a laptop that's a little bit lighter it make a, a noticeable difference I'm sure and like I said before there's no thread on the plastic in here so you just want to be careful um, you're snugging them up, you're not, they're not integral to anything. It's one nice thing about uh, SATA drives is they, for the most part, it's been years since I've seen a laptop with this type of proprietary, uh, uh, well, I can't say that word, proprietary, there we go, proprietary uh, <laughs> adapter. Um, the, the drives just plug right on in, and it's not an issue. The screws are a little, you know, a little bit stubborn going in, just because, like I said, no thread. Just screwing it straight into the plastic. So you wouldn't want to use this uh, case um, for a lot of uh, swaps. You know, it's kind of this is a you do this and you're done. You don't uh, swap it out a bunch unless you have a way to plug in the drive without needing the uh, caddy it's plugged into. And immediately, it's quieter because it's not having to spin that hard drive so hard nearly silent and obviously we could still hear the the fan going and then I will need to install crystal disk mark on this because I installed it after the fact or after the clone so let's get that installed okay now one thing that we did not do is we did not expand the um, no, that's fine. Uh, we did not expand the uh, storage space, 
So we can go ahead and go back and do that here in a minute, but first we'll do is run the, the test. All right, so the results are in, and the sequential, which is the first read-write line, uh, the read did improve uh, a bit, 25%. The write is actually with margin within margin of error the same as um, before the upgrade. However, the random uh, read-writes are improved by thousands of times like 3100 times better so just refresh previously we had point point four one one now we have twelve point four five uh, previously we had point four oh three now we have twelve point twenty eight megabytes per second uh, previously you had three which you mean point three four five eleven point eight two uh, previously six excuse me, point six two four sixteen point oh three. I mean it's just across the board this is I'm pretty sure I would say limited simply by the interface speed. Um, IDE is old and it's slow. There's a reason why we imp uh, improved and we now have uh, SATA. But the SSD improvements over a spinning drive it's obviously faster in uh, non-sequential read writes it takes less battery power and it generates less heat previously I'd only been able to find val uh, valid replacements that were just too expensive they were cost prohibitive but with the um, adapter and the um, mSATA that uh, I was able to purchase and again I'll link those in the description definitely I think worth doing if you have an older system with an IDE drive uh, that's where it has these pins here oh, let's see focus there you go with these pins so definitely in my opinion it's a worthwhile upgrade if it's a laptop you're going to keep around a long time maybe you have a retro gaming PC uh, or you have a PC that um, you know, maybe runs a piece of software. I know a lot of guys run old laptops that uh, run, run Windows XP that um, they do it for like uh, car diagnostic software and you want to get something that will last and be more reliable well here you go. Clone the, that old hard drive to a new SSD and get another few years left of life out of that laptop um, that you use for diagnosing the uh, diagnosing and tuning cars so there you go anyways if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section down below i'll do my best to answer those thank you for watching and i hope you have an amazing day